does not appear that either party is present. In front of the court, what is the status of this file? Uh, the defendant has a support obligation of $188, the current balance of $3,345.84. The last payment was February of 2023 in the amount of $247. This was an involuntary payment. Previous to that was September of 2021 in the amount of $111.04. It's previously failed to appear on February 13th of 2019. Um, given his failure to appear today, the friend of the court would ask for a bench warrant with bond in the amount of $850 plus $100 in court costs. Thank you. The file does indicate Mr. Weatherholt was sent notice for today's hearing. He has failed to appear and does have outstanding balance approaching $3,400 in this matter. Given his failure to appear, I'll recommend the issuance of the benchmark, the amount of $850 plus $100 in costs. DS, we do have Mr. Woodworth present. Sir, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, and if Ms. Maury is present, if she could unmute and identify herself. Yep. All right, good morning. All right, front of the court, what is the status of this matter? The defendant has an obligation of $442 and an account balance of $6,201.50. <clears throat> we have information that he's been incarcerated since June 5th and has a release date of January 18th of 2024. And we're just looking to confirm that information or to see if the defendant will be incarcerated longer. All right. All right, Mr. Worth. Um, is it accurate that you have a release date in January of next year? Yes, Your Honor. So you, in January 18th, does that sound correct to you? Yes. Okay. And upon release, do you anticipate being able to return to employment? Well, I'm not sure. I got other charges in another county. Okay. Are those going to be dealt with before your release, or are you expecting they won't be dealt with until you're released and then... On a whole um, transfer. Not until after my release, probably. Okay. Anything else you'd like me to know, sir? Um, yeah, I really, I, I'd like to deal with this matter when I get out because I need to hire a lawyer. Okay. Miss Maury, if you could let me know if you have any questions or any comments. Nope. Okay, thank you. All right, well, it does appear that Mr. Woodworth is going to be incarcerated for a period of just over 180 days. Um, what we'll do then is adjourn this matter. To our first date after that January 18th release date is January 24th, 2024. So we'll adjourn the matter to that date. Obviously, obviously, if Mr. Woodworth is somewhere else, we will try and get him to zoom in from there. Um, Mr. Woodworth, if you are released and out, if you can just confirm that with friend of the court upon your release. Uh, if you are transferred to another facility, then yeah, we'll there, try and... A, yeah, because there was a lot of court dates I didn't even know about. And I mean, I don't even feel how I owe that much, really, because when I was out, I was taking, I was putting, giving money for my kids and stuff and all this. I mean, right. I, I find a lot of this ridiculous, really. Well, if you if you've got proof of some other payments, then make sure you're able to provide that, and then we would certainly yeah, do that and, and with payments too. Ms. Mori, do you think I don't know if you how familiar you are with the balance, but do you think payments were made that were not? Credited to the account? No. He'd buy stuff for the kids and then he'd either want the money back or the stuff back. So, no. <laughs> All right. So, we're obviously not in a position to, to deal with those issues today, but what we'll do is we'll address everything when we get. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, before sure it gets released. My rental agreement and everything on my lease when I got a prison. Did she she come back after two days after I got out of prison, fought with my parole agent to be around me. I mean, she's a good mom. She she does good. I just don't get it. She just needs to stop her drinking every day and everything else. She'd be good. 
In front of the court, is there an abatement on this matter right now? No, we were waiting for the 180 day threshold to be met. Okay. All right. And now that it is, Mr. Chair, even on my food stamp case. All right. Well, we'll adjourn this matter then to January 24th. Um, we'll see if we have Mr. Woodworth released at that time or not, and then proceed forward based on where everything's at on January 24th. Do you have any questions, Mr. Woodworth? Um, I just want to say, I mean, I'm not trying to get her in trouble or nothing. That, that ain't what I'm trying to do. She's a good person. She's a good mom. I, I can't ask for a better mother, but it, it just seems like I, you know, I just want this done with. I mean, I mean, if, I mean, if it makes her happy, what, what do I got to do? Do I got to sign off? I mean, I, I've been lying so a lot on things. That's the negotiation you can have with her or discussions you can have with her um, before we get to court next, if you get a chance. If not, we'll see you back here on January 24th. Right. Ms. Mori, do you, Ms. Mori, do you have any questions? No. All right. Thank you both for appearing. It does conclude this matter, and you may sign off. I have sent a yes. message to Miss Fife to let her know that her audio is not connected. So I've sent her two messages. Um, I'm, it doesn't appear that she's even working on it. So I'm not quite sure what we need to do on that. Okay. If counsel could please place their appearance on the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Matthew Vermetten on behalf of Mr. Hepburn. Thank you. And Miss Fife. Ma'am, are you able to hear me? As indicated, it does not look like she is connected to the audio. There has been messages sent to Ms. Fife. If the court staff has a number for Ms. Fife, perhaps we could call her and either have her call in or retry signing in. Mm. Also, I'm going to have to call a different matter um, while we try and get Miss Fife connected. One DM. I do believe we have Mr. Caverly present, sir. Could you please unmute and identify yes. yourself? All right. I do not see Miss Caverly present. Uh, Mr. Caverly, this is your motion regarding pairing time. Is that correct? Yes. And what are you seeking for the court to do? I am wanting to switch uh, parenting time to safe haven because I have been, been unable to get my brothers and brothers' wives to, they haven't been able to supervise. Okay. So, Do you anticipate they won't be able to supervise at all moving forward? No. Okay. All right. Well, Ms. Caverly is not present. This matter was set for 10. It is 10.02. The court has not heard from her indicating uh, there was any issue with her appearing. Uh, Mr. Caverly, I'm going to put you under oath real quick and ask you a few questions. Would you please raise your right hand? You solemnly swear or affirm a testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. Thank you. So, sir, you're indicating that your current supervisor is not available. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But you would like to then utilize Safe Haven in Traverse City. Is that correct? Yes. All right. When was the last time you had any visitation? It's been about a year. It's been a year since the any visitation happened? Yes. Right. And you did send Miss Caverly notice of this hearing, did you not? Yes, I did. Did you have any discussions with her about this issue? Um, no, she agreed with me. You know, switch, to safe, switch it to safe haven. Yes. And what are your thoughts on the time for safe haven? They're a little bit different than scheduling, so it's not always easy. Uh, have you talked to anyone there yet or not? No, I haven't talked to safe haven yet. All right. But last time I've done it in the past and, and the timing was fine. Okay. So. All right. Well, what I'll indicate then is that uh, I would grant your motion regarding uh, pairing time, given the fact that the supervisor is not available and that instead supervision should happen at safe Haven up to every other weekend. 
for a time period of up to six hours, depending on what safe haven can accommodate. They might not be able to give you six hour blocks depending on their schedule, sir. So it might be four hours or something else. Okay. Um, so, so it's ultimately going to depend on what they can accommodate, but I will indicate that you can have up to six hours every other weekend, depending on what safe haven can accommodate. Um, that the parties, you will need to contact Safe Haven and go through their administrative processes with information. I will, the order will also indicate that will indicate that both parties need to contact Safe Haven to set up the visitation. Do you have any other questions, sir? No, thank you. All right, thank you, thank you for appearing today. That does conclude your matter. Okay. Let's have Miss Fife now with audio, so I will recall the. Fife versus Hepburn matter filed by 6DM. We do have counsel present for Mr. Hepburn, uh, Mr. Vermetten, and then Ms. Fife. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. We do have her connected. Uh, Mr. Vermetten, this is your motion. Is that correct? It is, Your Honor. Thank you. And in general, what are you seeking to do at this time? <clears throat> what we are seeking to do is uh, we're requesting that the court allow essentially the parenting time to flip-flop uh, into uh, Mr. Hepburn's uh, arena. Mr. Hepburn had lived outside of the state in Arizona where he had gainful employment. He has since uh, moved back to Michigan. Uh, he has secured long-term employment and living arrangements in Greenville, uh, which is in the Grand Rapids metro area. Uh, there have been several issues with the couple's minor child, Ezra, who is, I believe, 12 years old as we're speaking. And uh, Ezra has uh, expressed a strong desire uh, to live with his father. There are also some extenuating circumstances with CPS being called uh, to uh, Gaylord, uh, the, the residence of his mother, uh, for a variety of reasons. I'm not certain we want to get into all of those reasons today. I think it would be probably a solid half day to two thirds of a day evidentiary hearing. If we got to that point, we'd need to bring in those witnesses. What we would rec uh, what, what we would uh, submit to is we would not be disagreeable to going into a mediated setting in this matter. Um, but if an evidentiary hearing is needed, uh, we would ask for that together uh, with an in-camera interview of Ezra. Thank you. Ms. Fife. what is your position on the request? Um, I deny. I, I deny the request. I don't feel that any of these issues that he's bringing up um, are accurate, honestly. Okay. Well, if we're looking at an evidentiary hearing, I can give you a three hour time slot on November 15th. If you think three hours really won't do it, we could potentially have a hearing on December 11th. I've got the morning and the afternoon available at this time. But we could also try the three hours, do our best to get it done. If we need a little extra time, then we can add some time on another date. Um, what are your thoughts on that schedule, Mr. Vermette? Yeah, thank you, Ryder. You know, frankly, I think it was a, a good idea to uh, let's get it started on November 15th. I think that's in Ezra's best interest. Uh, and we will do our level best to get all of it in in three hours. Uh, to the extent we have to bump out, it looks like we may have a landing zone on December 11th that may be helpful. And usually I can go till 4.30, sometimes 5 on those days too. So if we're, if we're right, right at the end and it looks like we just need a little more time, we can certainly make it happen that day potentially too. Um, I would indicate that the child interview should happen then at 12.45 that day. Uh, Mr. Vermetten, are you agreeable to do this by Zoom or are you at, well, that would be a different issue. If you want it in person, it will have to be a different day. If you're okay with Zoom, we can do it on the 15th. I'm certainly fine with Zoom. Two and a half years ago, if you would have asked me that, I would have huffed and puffed <laughs> uh, with all this white hair. But uh, now we're getting pretty used to screen sharing and Zooming. Okay, perfect. Ms. Fife, do you have any issue with 
holding this hearing by Zoom? I do not. All right. So we'll schedule then for November 15th at 1 p.m. by Zoom. There will also be the child interview at 1245. Um, Ms. Fife, do you see any issue with somebody getting the child to the courthouse at 1245 that day for the interview? On uh, November 15th? Yes. No, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vermetten, anything additional? Uh, no, Your Honor. I think that uh, is fine and appreciate it uh, and appreciate the expediency that the court is looking at this. Thank you. And Ms. Fife, anything additional from you? No, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you both for appearing. We'll see you back here on November 15th, DC. Um, Friend of the court, looks like you have the parties present. If you could please unmute and just let me know if you can hear me okay. Yes. And Ms. LaCrosse, can you hear me okay? Hear you. All right. Friend of the court, what is the status of this matter? This is the friend of the court hearing to address the medical support obligation. The friend of the court received information that the minor child is on a medical grant with the plaintiff as the grantee. The defendant was ordered to carry insurance. So we're just seeking information on whether or not the defendant still provides insurance or if the state medical is the only medical insurance involved. Thank you. Mr. Rogier, are you currently providing insurance for the child? Yes, sir. All right. And that's active and ongoing? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. LaCrosse, is that correct? Yes. All right. Front of court with that, do you need anything additional? No, the support will remain how it is then. All right. All right, thank you both for appearing. We just did have to bring you in to address that to see if that was still the case. Um, if not, that could make a change in support, but given that Mr. Rogier is still carrying the insurance, there won't be any change. You okay. both are free to sign. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.